back to Virtual School Assembly. Today, our guest is Sadia Caron. Sadia graduated from the University of Pennsylvania, uh, an Ivy League school, with a degree in English and a degree in French. She, and we'll get into this in the interview, but she loves languages. So we'll, we'll make sure to circle back to that. She's lived in Paris, Rio de Janeiro, uh, each for two years in those places. She's a writer, she's an actress, uh, and she's a member of Mensa. Right now she lives in Las Vegas, and I'm so excited to have you on the show, Sadia. Thanks for being here. Hi, everybody. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. So today I want to talk about writing. Um, we're, we're talking to school kids, and a lot of them really feel like writing is just this thing they have to do. It's torturous. They don't like English. Um, <sighs> of course that's wrong. I know, too. I know, too. But I, I wanted to talk about some of the opportunities. now. Before we get into those opportunities, let's talk about some of the things you've done. So okay. um, kids, of course, are interested that you're a member of SAG-AFTRA, so you've been in films and in television shows. Um, mm -hmm. How did that come for you? Did you just decide one day, hey, I'd like to be in a movie? <laughs> well, okay, so kids, I'm happy to be here. Um, the one thing I want to say is that when I was 14, 16, 18, I had no idea um how the world was going to change how i was going to change so it's okay to not know and it's okay to be sitting in high school and be like oh my god i need to be miss america and win the nobel prize and go to harvard and oxford and like go to mars like that's normal but then life kind of happens and you do all this super cool stuff and you turn out okay so forget the billionaire at 14 or whatever like that's that but it's gonna be fine so the great thing about writing is that when you spend time writing every day, whether it's a journal or whatever, you know, you're making up stories in your head, you learn how to organize your thoughts. And who needs organized thoughts? Salespeople, managers, teachers, grown-ups. <laughs> so by writing, you actually get this muscle that's very strong. So you can look at something and put words on it. I don't know if you ever saw Portlandia. It was this YouTube channel and they were putting a bird on everything. Like that was one of the skits. So why is it important to be able to put words on things? Well, when you're wound up, whether it's a pandemic or you witness a crime, you know, I was in New York on 9-11. I saw a lot of stuff. You need to be able to find your words. And it's kind of like going to the gym. If you go to the gym, you know, a couple times a week and, and you get decently in shape, when it comes time to actually work, you're ready. So by using your words every day, by increasing your vocabulary, by reading, by finding stuff to write about, when a grown up or an authority person or, or some situation happens, you have words. And when everyone else is like, ah! you're gonna be like, okay, this is what happened. The green car didn't stop. And then the red car also didn't stop, you know, or something like that. Right. So, so words have been a part of your life from the very beginning. And one thing that a, a lot of kids don't think about, one of the first big writing projects that you'll do that will have really lasting impact is your entrance essays to go to college. So yes. you, went, you went to a prestigious college in Ivy League school in Penn. Um, I'm guessing if you applied there, you probably applied to other Ivy League schools. So the, the essay process was probably a, a big deal for you. Talk through mm -hmm. that a bit. What went into constructing that essay? D did you whip it out in a half hour and you were good, or did it take some work? <laughs> Talk about that a little bit. Okay, absolutely. So, yes, thank you for bringing that up. Um, that, that was a big part of my life. And I wrote mine on a typewriter because we didn't have all your fancy internet stuff. I guess they do it online now. Right. Um, so I went to public high school up until 10th grade. And in my public high school, the teachers actually went on strike in seventh grade. And that's really bad because all of the teachers went on strike. So that year, the seniors, it was a nightmare. So a bunch of kids went to private school and I went to private school a couple of years later. And man, did they hold our hands on this thing. Like the whole part of private school, it's like getting people into the Olympics. You know, you've got to get your kids into good school. So right. they gave us these things called senior challenges, which we all did in our junior year to make us interesting. Hmm. You know, I don't have anything to write about. Well, look at it this way. Um, no matter where you are, you know, I'm in Las Vegas, you're wherever you are. 
there are people that will never get into the United States. We don't let everybody in that wants to come in. So there's a girl sitting in Paris, there's a girl sitting in Vietnam, there's a girl sitting in South America that's never gonna be able to see your city, your house, your room, your school. So when you look at it that way, it really puts things in perspective. When your world is just your high school, of course everybody knows what you know, but your world is actually the whole world. So they held our hands and they made us do a bunch of like cool stuff. I did a religious studies, senior challenge where I looked at Hinduism and Buddhism and Judaism and just, you know, extra homework to make you interesting. I spent a summer in France when I was 17. My French teacher hooked me up with a family and that was amazing. And I was told, do not write about your summer in France because everybody's going to write about that. So the key to your college essay is be you, but you're like 15, 16, 17. You're like, I don't even know who I am. Fair enough but you should know what you like and what you don't like yeah. and whatever you like, go do more of it. So I'm sure the grownups are like, Oh my God, you kids, you have everything these days on YouTube and you're not spending hours listening to classical music or watching Shakespeare because the grownups are like, it's all there. Or you're like, I don't know where to start. So I want to recommend a couple channels. I want to recommend a couple things. If you hate it, fine, move on. But if you like it, like, dig into it. So um, I think everybody knows the Kardashians, love them or hate them, but they do a reality show. That's what it's called, right? A reality show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Well, back in the 50s, okay, the 1950s, before I was born, before you were born, right? right. There was a reality type show called Ozzy and Harriet, O-Z-Z-I-E and Harriet. They were a real family. And they had a radio show because kids TV didn't really get invented until like the, didn't become big until the fifties. They had a radio show and they would take stories from their actual family life and put them on the radio. Now she was an actress and he was a band leader. So they were already familiar with entertainment. They had two kids and then they would just write scripts based on the life of their two teenagers. And that is amazing. Like when you think how smart these people were to live their whole life seven days a week and find all the best parts and slap that into a TV show. And it ran forever. And Ricky Nelson, the younger one, became an actual rock star because he would play his songs on their show. So if you're trying to figure out what makes me interesting or who am I or, or how can I grow, spend a half an hour a day, you know, trying something new. Classical music, it's like pizza. You're gonna find something that you like, okay? Like, talk to grownups or do some research on the internet. Bach is great because he's very mathematical and it's beautiful and it's very calming. Mozart was kind of crazy. He put lots of notes everywhere, but you're gonna recognize some of this music. But if you spend all your time on whatever kids do today, Dragon Ball or TikTok or whatever, you're not gonna grow. So half an hour a day, man. Just listen to music. And if you hate one guy, try some other guy. Watch Ozzy and Harriet. Watch black and white movies. Um, the cool thing about Ozzy and Harriet, like, they had, like, one TV camera. They were so expensive back then. And just, they were an actual family. And, yeah, they weren't very diverse. And, but they were good people. The mom stayed at home, the mom cooked, the dad did his thing, the kids, you know, oh, I'm trying to ask a girl out to the dance. Oh, drama, drama. But it was cute. And um, well, that's an reason, example of there's taking- a reason that was popular, right? Because they were the original YouTubers. They they had a vlog, exactly. right? And so that's, we, we have that today. And the cool opportunity for kids is you can create channels. You can start exploring and become creators we're talking about writing, but writing is a creative process. And, and I know from yeah. being on the other side of that admissions table. So as a professor, I read scholarship applications all the time. And what, um, what we're talking about here is really important. Everybody has a story, but you need to practice telling that story. Um, the yeah. more times you write it out, the better it's going to be. So when you submit that application, you know, whatever challenge or obstacle you've overcome in your life, whatever sets you apart is unique and different. You need to practice that. You can't just whip it out in, in 15, 20 minutes and think that it's going to make a difference. 
Um, you need to take some time. <laughs> you and I can, because we're grownups. <laughs> we have years and years and years of practice. So here's a test, okay? So let's say you watch a TikTok video. Mm -hmm. Now go describe it. Go write what you saw. And if you see the video once, you're not going to do a very good job. You're like, oh, it's two girls dancing. Well, I'm going to read two girls dancing and not be able to picture the video that you just saw. So there was this French guy called Rob Grier, and he wrote like a journalist. He just wrote like a photographer about everything. So if he were to describe you, he would be like, there was a man with a beard and a mustache and a red shirt and a brown chair, you know, and a darker brown chair next to him. And there was a girl in a blue sweatshirt and an empty room, but I'm a plant. Look, it's not empty. Um, and so that's just a good practice to just write what you see. You know, describe your room in words and then show it to somebody, a friend who hasn't seen it. And can you describe it accurately? Can you describe it enough so that someone could find it right. if they had to? Um, that's a great practice. Yeah, good, good tip. So, Sadia, as, as you've continued through your life, you've had other opportunities to write and get published. Talk about a few of those. What are some of the or who are some of the people that you've written for and what have you written about? Okay, sure. So I started off um, back when I was in school in the olden days or whatever they call it now. Um, it was expected that you would get an English degree and then go work in like human resources. Like that's what, that's kind of the path. So I took poetry classes and I'm so glad that I did because some of the poets that we studied in college, they were meant to be read out loud. And so the way that they would choose their words and use their words and the rhythm of the words, almost like a song, is really important. And when you get into writing, there's all these little tricks and things that you can use, like alliteration, where everything starts with the same letter. Um, little lamb, you know, Mary had a little lamb. That's a tiny example, but they both start with L. And that's how you can call attention to different things in your writing, almost like a painter. So you can choose to highlight stuff. So I start writing poetry, right? Um, I took poetry writing classes. Well, then I get out of college and I start doing poetry readings. And that's where I learned how to behave on stage. At first I was terrible and then you get better. Somebody heard me talking about poetry and cast me in a play. This was in DC, like that's just wow. what happened. Cool. I was like, blah, 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 Jason and the Argonauts. So Jason was this guy, and he had to go get this golden fleece. And, and then he married, you know, the king's daughter, and everyone thought she was a witch, and she did horrible things. I don't want to, you know, scare your students. But yeah, she was horrible, Midia. And this guy was like, hey, I wrote a play, and it was at this tiny theater in D.C. He's like, um, and I want you to be in my play. Come see the one that, that's on stage now. The theater held like 50 people, if that. And I want you to be in the next one. And I went and I saw his play and I was like, okay, I think I can do this. And then I was like the dumbest person, right, around all these real actors who were pretty famous in D.C. And they told me about a place called the Actor Center, where they take <laughs> you know, people who know nothing like me and turn them into actors. It was like $50 a year and they would have workshops on headshots, on monologues, on stage combat. So... You know, the theme for my life is just walk through the open door. This guy said, I want to put you in my play. And I was like, okay. You know, what if I said no? What if I was like, ew, you're weird. I was like, ah, you know, it's in public. You know, I, the play was fine. And, and then I grew. At one point, I was working out a lot. And I went to the theater bookstore in D.C. And they're like, hey, we need models for some of our costumes for our catalog. Do you want a model? And I was like, sure. <laughs> So I did catalog work and you learn. And when you don't know, of course you do stuff wrong. Um, in that play, I did everything wrong. I would walk to the theater in my costume because my costume came from my own closet. You don't do that. The stage is sacred and you don't want to confuse the audience. And you put those clothes in your backpack and you put them on when you get to the stage and you take them off when the show is done. Dude, I did everything wrong. Um, and people were so patient with me because I just didn't know, you know? Um, so writing is going to help you with scholarship applications, with job applications. If you can write well, you are going to interview well because you know how to organize your thoughts. Right. Um, let me 
think. Uh, where else has writing taken me? Well, um, when I was in France, I got a job teaching English, of course, and I used American songs. Uh, so we used the lyrics, right, from, from the famous singers, and I turned them into grammar lessons because the students already wanted to listen to the song, right? I'm not gonna pull out Shakespeare and make them learn that crazy English that no one uses. I would hear them listening to songs and I would just write out the lyrics. And then you get to see like the poetry. Back in the day, Sting was a big deal. He was a teacher. So when he writes lyrics, man, he's not just slapping them out in 10 seconds. He's like putting a lot of thought into them. Right. And so that helped a lot. Um, and then when you start learning other languages, it's like at a whole nother level. So even something simple, right? Like in English, we say, I like it. In French, we say, it pleases me. In Spanish, we say, it pleases me. Me gusta. In Spanish, uh, ça me plaît. You know, it to me is nice. Portuguese, we get off the hook. It's just yo gosto. It's like, it's just, I like it. Just like in English. but. Once you fall in love with words and the power of words, you know, it started off with me thinking of all the different words for blue. Like, this is blue, right? But this is also blue. How would you tell them apart? How would you explain them to someone? And then you see, like, the, the word courage. If you break it down, in French, coup, C-O-U, is your neck. And rage is like anger. So it's like neck anger is courage. You're like, wow, that's kind of cool. So yes, I'm a huge nerd, <laughs> but that's okay. The world needs nerds. Right. Well, and the cool thing about the world needing nerds is, as we've already talked about, when when you really explore words, it opens doors. And and uh, we don't have the time to get into it today, but you've had a lot of opportunities because you speak several foreign languages and you've played around with those words and you've been able to write things that have opened doors for you. And I love that you use that example of the play unexpected doors will open when you're prepared and ready to take action. So yes. I, I, I just, I love that message. I think that's going to resonate with a lot of kids today. Final piece of advice for aspiring writers out there. What's something that you wish you'd done or something maybe that you did do during high school to develop as a writer? I wish I had known more about good books. Um, when I was in high school, it's like, hi, here's Huckleberry Finn. Hi, here's The Color Purple. And they're amazing. Right. But there are so many good books. My favorite time period is probably like 1850. So the Bronte sisters and not just Wuthering Heights, like there are a right. bunch of sisters and they all wrote really good books. Um, even without the internet, like I had a library. I just didn't know <laughs> what to read. Right. So spend some time every day on discipline, right? So watch some Ozzy and Harriet. You might hate it. You might love it. But if you just stay in your bubble of your Facebook and your Snapchat, and your Instagram, whatever it is, you're not growing. And so even if you can spend 10 minutes a day, like Duolingo, right? 10 minutes a day, half an hour a day, growing, learning, listen to new music, get a book, get a book. My favorite Amen. books, there's a book called Shirley, S-H-I-R-L-E-Y. I forget who wrote it, but I have it written down somewhere. And then Adam Bede. B-E-D-E. -E. These are books that are screaming to be made into movies. They're really, really good reads because back then no one had anything to do except read. So spend a little bit of time trying something new or, or taking a step down a path that you've chosen. If you want to play guitar, you've got to play guitar every day. That's all there is to it. If you don't want to learn how to play guitar, listen to the Gypsy Kings, like listen to classical, like grow your brain because you never know who you're gonna meet. And if you're super into this thing, the universe is gonna help bring more of that thing to you. Awesome, that's fantastic advice. Well, thank you so much for being here on the show with us today and for your wisdom. Um, it, it's cool to see what you've been able to do with writing and, and what an encouragement and, and motivation it is to our students. So thank you so much for being here.